What is up, bros? with Josh here. In today's video, we're going over some ranked battle gameplay. This season so far, in my opinion, has been a lot of fun. It's a little bit of a different setup. It's 6v6 instead of 7v7, which I found to be a lot faster gameplay. It's been a lot of fun that way. And I feel like uh, ships in general have just been... It, it's just faster. Whenever it's faster like this, this is part of like the ranked sprint style too. Those games tend to go a bit quicker. I just think it's more fun that way. You're in and out. It's less of a hassle. And you're on to the next game. And it's been a lot of fun so far. I've been playing uh, on both accounts so far. And yes, both accounts. Kind of both the rank 5 at this point And using the Jutland on both of them. It's been extremely strong. If you haven't seen my video um, on my most recommended ships for rank battles. That's one thing I kind of want to talk about too. I'll put a link down below. And from what I've seen, it's actually got brought up last night on stream. We play all these live on twitch.tv slash mejash. So, so come check us out. Come hang out. But uh, it was, hey, have any of your picks from this rank battle season kind of come up and, uh, you know... I, have they shocked you or have ships, you know, that you thought would be strong, not be as strong. And really, if you look at kind of my top three for everything, it's been kind of the same. My, um, my guess on kind of the setup, which I think I've guess like three destroyers per team. It's been pretty much that, uh, one cruiser per team. That's kind of wavered a little bit more. We've seen kind of up to five DDs. Uh, we've seen up to two, three cruisers. And um, battleships seem to vary a lot. Uh, I've had games where I've had four battleships. And I've had games where there have been no battleships. Um, destroyers have stayed the most um, consistent with about three per game. Although there have been games where I've been the only DD on my team. And uh, that has been kind of its own little bit of fun there. But uh, still... Jetland has been super strong, and it's been... I, I like the the lots of DD gameplay. That It's a lot of action. Um, it kind of looks like Warships if it was a more action-based game, if you will. Um, but still, yeah, the Jetland's been doing a fantastic job and has been an absolute blast and really been playing that. I've been playing Jetland on two accounts. even played the Kitakaze on another account, which has been kind of goofy fun. Um, but still, this ship has been amazing, even post-nerf. But the question came up, have any of the ships that I thought would be extremely good kind of not really been that good and uh our little jutland over here <laughs> as you keep looking at him apparently is still spotted and went right into radar we tried to call him back uh but uh what are you gonna do it is forever dd but at least he got his four torps off and it was worth trading all that we end up getting a, a torp on the buffalo as well but it's it's been fun. Um, I know that for a lot of people, every season, I know this is always a bummer, um, it, ranked is always very salty for a lot of people, and I, I know that is. So, as always, I always recommend if you are playing through ranked battles to play a little bit. If you are losing a few games or you're losing a few stars, hold off, come back at a little time, a later time, if you are, you know... If you're playing on tilt, you're gonna play. You're not gonna play your best game, so uh, you're gonna want to kind of just hang out. And I don't even know how he got killed, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, what are you gonna do there? Not much you can really do. Um, but if you're playing on tilt or playing angry, you're not gonna play your best uh, warships. So just take a break, come back, and don't. I always say, don't let World of Warships win. Don't let ranked win when it comes to ranked battles, because if you do. Um, it's just going to take you longer, and always, I always recommend finding a ship that you like to play and works for you, and uh, and stick with that ship. If you are switching a bunch of ships and switching up a bunch, uh, you know, switching to a battleship this game, a destroyer next game, a you know cruiser the next game, it's going to take you a lot longer to play and to rank out because you're not going to be familiar with how those ships turn. You're not going to be familiar with all of this basically. So um, I do recommend one taking breaks do a rank a day that's something we always talk about too a rank a day um you know doing taking a break if you need to and not throwing away because if you start losing a bunch of stars you're going to lose potentially a day or two of progress and then you have to fight to get that back so um that is something i would definitely avoid if possible but we're playing the Jutland right here, and we get pretty lucky. This Jutland is a fantastic player. Um, we played against him a couple times, and a uh, friend of the stream as well. And um, he got pretty lucky, or we got pretty lucky because he goes and beach. And actually, one of my weakest picks was the Radar Chung Mu. Um, one of my weakest picks, people keep asking me, hey, is the Chung Mu viable? I mean, everything's viable in the end, but the Chung Mu was actually pretty clutch right here because he goes into a double stacked radar. So it goes right into. Um, 
the uh, the Chengmu radar goes in and uh, then right into the Buffalo uh, radar. So luckily he beached and uh, we were able to then get this kill early because we lost our Jutland early. So we were taking out there, probably their best player and able to kill that. And we killed the Buffalo on top of that. So we're feeling pretty good. And as we see there, Musashi was completely out of um, out of position and we can just go in and hopefully knock this out. And there we go. So that was a pretty good kill right there. Also, Musashi was there. Our Chung Wu is going to kind of roll around. But this was a pretty exciting game. So remember, it's 6v6. But anyways, uh, back to what I was saying. Uh, the topic came up, have any of the ships so far, it's still very early in the season, but I feel like the meta has kind of started to balance out. In the first couple days, it's always just a madhouse. Um, there's always kind of a pattern. Everyone plays what they think will be strong. And then after that, everyone plays, uh, everyone starts to get beat up by certain ships. So then they start to take, um, you know, the counter or what's kind of countering them. And then in the end, everyone just tends to play destroyers. <laughs> That's kind of what ends up happening. But um, this season has been kind of the strongest that you know the ships that have been strong tier 9 is pretty proven uh we just did a season just a couple months ago or a few months ago now where it was the arms race so i guess it's been longer than that and the strongest ships from then were still the strongest ships now except the alaska has found its place i think the alaska has been very strong but the two the couple ships that have kind of stood out to me um uh, that have kind of not been as good as expected have been the benham I have found that the Benham has been, I don't know if it's just because of the players I've seen playing it, but the Benham, I'm kind of making the joke that the Benham has been the Shimakaze of the season. And what I mean by that is that most are so hyper-focused on getting their torps off, not really shooting their guns, and not really getting into the best position, that the Benham has been relatively weak this season. And again, that may just be the people like taking, now the Benham has a pretty low health pool for tier 9, but its guns are still pretty decent. And people aren't like hyper aggressive with it, so um, I don't. I feel like that's been the biggest surprise. I feel like the Benham was gonna get a bunch of like early kills and whatnot, and I felt like it was gonna be a pretty big um, impact on the team, maybe get an early kill. But there's been a decent amount of Jutlands. There's been a decent amount of Z46s. I guess not too many Z46s, but there's there's enough with Hydro that maybe it's just countering them enough. And it's kind of shut down what the Benham strength is. And I think a lot of Benhams are probably set up for pure torque build. As you saw, that Benham only had 14,500 health. That's a very low health pool. And here you see the epic work we're going to need to do. Um, I got really lucky right here on this set of torps. Um, but uh, we're going to hold off on that too. So remember, we only shot one set of torps here. But I feel like so many Benhams are purely focused on torps and what i mean by that is they don't shoot their guns this is kind of like really a perfect example right here is they're just so hyper focused and gray line best line uh you're gonna see me <laughs> luckily we went against a dd who was full life and you're gonna see how much damage we're gonna take so this starts the comeback if you will uh benham gray lining the hell out of it we take down the ja the jean bar again four out of four on that so pretty freaking solid so that's a nice little uh dev strike well actually i didn't even get the dev strike wow and pretty typical benham player i guess right here this is kind of what i've seen all season i have i've not been impressed by the benham i've not been impressed by what the benham has been able to do and just like that the jutland continues to be the king of this tier uh for destroyers even after uh the the nerf it's still so freaking strong and here we see uh the ability of the jutland we're gonna take this cat back and we kind of just lock this game in just like that almost dev strike the the Jean Bart and killed the Benham. Another ship that has kind of, for me, been uh, a ship that, in my opinion, hasn't been super strong, that was relatively strong last time in arms race, was the Seattle. Um, Seattle has been, I wouldn't say weak, but I feel like the Buffalo has really shown that it's been a lot stronger in these types of situations. The main thing is, uh, um, the main thing is, the, the Seattle only has the shorter range radar, where the Buffalo has the longer range. One's nine, one's 10 kilometers. That's been another ship that has kind of, you know, done its thing. But overall, everything has been pretty normal. Alaska's have been very strong. I've seen that. Kronstadt's still very strong. 
Buffaloes have been a standout. Daunt Scoys have also been strong if played correctly. Um, so those have been really the standout cruisers. The Seattle kind of left behind. And from what I've seen all season, the Neptune has just gotten absolutely wrecked. Uh, there's a couple people trying to bring, um, bring some radar Neptunes into the game, and it's been pretty unsuccessful. Uh, it just isn't that good of a ship. But... Uh, you know, it is. It's up to whatever they want to play. So, but really, it's been a DD heavy season. That's to be expected. Um, ranked usually is pretty DD heavy, but again, but there has been a range from about. Uh, and here, I, before I continue that, this was a really good, uh, like, debate, if you will. And if what I mean by that is we kind of tricked him into taking these torps because he was going too fast. So this is something I always do that a lot of people don't do is there I'm willing to trade life to for, to take out a target. So he was going full speed into this gap. So what I wanted to do, as obviously you can see, he's going full speed. I wanted him to turn and you can even hear me say on stream, I just need him to turn a little bit. And instantly, as soon as I started firing, he turned his guns. And so I knew at that point that this was basically a GG. He set on me, he put his secondaries on me, they're popping off, and he turned in. So, uh, and we're even, we kind of tricked him into shooting that. We get a flood on that torp, which means he's going to have to repair it. And uh, I think even after this, um, he repped that one. And I think it's long enough. I think I, I set off the torps just enough that... This right when his repair goes down. I think this was about as perfect as possible. We get another flood right there. Three tour pits. We're up to 134k, and the, and the flood stuck. So that was basically perfect. So yeah, all right. I'm gonna pat myself on the back a little bit. I played insane this game. We got the dev strike on the Jean Bart. You guessed that. We made the Musashi kind of push in right there. He even beached. And uh, yeah, we're uh, we're bringing this game back. All right. And obviously we know where the Kitakaze is. We're going to get the kill here. He has a full duration flood. Um, and we are going to work this down. I'm going to get this cap as well. Sticky fire there. He can do a little bit of damage. We know the kid only has like 3k life. And uh, as long as our buffalo stays alive, we're good to go. And we can bring this back. So um, a nice little swing right there up to 156k. And uh, it should be pretty good. So this was a pretty fun game. The, we had a couple games where they've just been absolute blowouts. So that's one downside, I would say, about Tier 6, or 6v6, not Tier 6, um, is that games are decided very quickly, and um, that can be a bit of a downside. Whenever it's DD uh, heavy meta, it is it, games can go pretty fast. So if it's a 3 or 4 DD game, and um, you, know, you lose 1 or 2 instantly, and there's not very good trades, yeah, that can decide the game pretty quick. But I... I would rather the game kind of go fast and get into the next one than, uh, you know, kind of sitting around and having it be a lot slower. I like the speeds of this game. That's why sprint is so much fun to me is that you're in the game. It's it's decided very quickly and then you can kind of bring it back if needed or, uh, you know, you can move on to the next one. So I kind of enjoy that. Also. When I play these, I tend to play destroyers, so you know it's always fun that way. But I like a lot of action. There's a there's the skill level of there's a lot of radar cruisers. Um, so radar cruisers adds another layer of skill into playing destroyers. So that's a lot of fun to me, um, knowing how to play around it. And I was like, wait, what the hell? He got high caliber. Our our buffalo took like two torps. Um, but he's going to be hanging on there, and we brought this back. This was this was just after, and I thought about making another video, and I still might. Like I think the actual game right before this, or maybe the game before that, was another <laughs> was another epic comeback win. Um, so when I play lots of ranked, I don't want to do too many YouTube videos, but let me know in the comments below if you guys want to see a pretty insane comeback um again with the jutland but it's on the new map as well um i can keep putting up those i try not to do too many ranked related videos but when we're playing it that tends to be what the content surrounded um again we play all these live on twitch.tv but let me know in the comments below if you have kind of picked a ship and then switched it up. I'm always interested to see what everyone switches to, um, how the meta changes. Uh, for me, I tend to stick with one ship and stick with that throughout the whole season. I kind of, I kind of hold on and watch and see what the meta is, um, see what's going to be strong, and then play what I think will be the best. But I always play something I feel very comfortable in, and I really don't change up anything else. Um, I just play that one ship and really just kind of master it. I want to know how that ship plays. I want to know. Um, 
you know, how it turns, how it fires, uh, you know, what angles or what, and uh, the Jutland obviously just insanely strong, and we were able to bring this game back, and uh, taking out this kiddo, we knew he was really low life, and uh, we're gonna bring it back right here, and there's our Kraken, so in a 6v6, we get our Kraken 161k, we basically got a dev strike on the Jutland, we basically got a dev strike on the uh, Musashi in a way, we did a ton of damage to him, and we're able to bring it back in a nice little epic comeback. But let me know in the comments below if you guys want to see another game. Maybe I'll wait a couple days. Um, but it was with the Jutland again on the new map, which is kind of exciting to play. And I actually really like it. But let me know in the comments below what you guys have started this rank season with. How your rank season has been going. And have you switched up ships depending on how the meta has been. I'm always interested to see that. Because you usually see a big change where people start with a ship they think will be strong. And then they change up to what they kind of need to play. Um, and that you, you kind of see that over time. You see some ships at the start of the season that are really popular and then kind of like change off into maybe more radar ships or more destroyers or a certain type of battleship that tends to play very well. And um, let me know in the comments below. I'm interested in what you guys see. But a pretty epic comeback. A Kraken in a 6v6 is always pretty cool and um, is always a fun one. But hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys enjoyed this comeback. But anyways, that's it for me. Remember to like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.